Wait for round two is the Trojans of McGee High School. Now, these two teams are no strangers to one another, so it should be a burn burner, baby, at Tiger Stadium. 645 pregame starts with the Tiger Radio Show. 7 o'clock kickoff. Join your award winning play by play announcers, the Bozeman, Wendell Hurry, and yours truly for all the play by play. And Jim Mario Shepard's books producer. It's the Friday night game of the week on WPRL 91.7 FM and WPRL.org. WPRL 91.7 FM, home of Tiger football. It's the 2023 Mississippi High School Association playoff round two. Don't you miss it, baby? Let's go get them, Tigers. And we welcome you back to the Davey Whitney Arena. Coming up, Alcorn and Xavier coming your way. Glad you can join us here on the Braves Sports Network on this Wednesday. College basketball season underway. Monday night, Lady Braves. Monday night, the men. Tonight, the men will take on Xavier of Louisiana. Landon Bussey's stomping grounds. They'll talk about that. Coming up, this is game number two. On Monday, the Braves played Arkansas, lost 93-59, to shot 40%. Jeremiah Gambrell leading the Braves with 17 points. Byron Joshua with 12. And head coach Landon Bussey joining us here on the pregame show. Coach, uh, what can you take out of the Arkansas game? And, of course, your game started at 7. The Lady Braves played at 6.30. So I was in Starkville, and I was watching the play-by-play of the game close for the first media timeout that Arkansas started to pull away in the first half and then obviously tough second half. I was thinking about you all along the way as that run was getting bigger and bigger in the deficit and I just picture you and I know look, Arkansas's top 15 team in the country one of the top 15, 20 teams in the country but I know there were some things regardless that you were not happy with and some things that you were proud of so just give us your thoughts on that Arkansas game on Monday. We did a great job of just coming out, um, establishing ourselves, coming out, and really just, you know, trying to check the tempo. Um, of course, Arkansas, you know, number 14 team in the nation, very well-coached team, a lot of transfers. They played at level four. Um, so, I mean, I was happy, happy how we got out there and competed. Um, just got to continue to build, continue to get better. One of those games, you know, what you wanted to get out of it, the effort, number one, execution. Talk about that aspect. Um, our execution was, was subpar just due to how well um, Arkansas just pushed us out and pushed us out and pushed us out. Um, so it was tough. It was tough for us to really get, you know, to execute our plays we wanted to execute, I think, defensively. I think our zone slowed them down a little bit. But, you know, it's really hard to get through any type of evaluations against, you know, Arkansas and those type of teams just because of how well disciplined they are. When you talk about discipline, Coach, on the basketball court, I hear it in football – discipline cutting down on penalties you're a football guy so you you know all about that from a football perspective the undisciplined penalties that hurt a football team what's Landon Bussey's definition of discipline or lack of discipline in terms of just execution running the system staying with the script if you will just you know doing what we talk about every single day um, as far as the defensive end um, if it's on the defense, we talk about boxing out. Every single time the shot go up, go find a body and box out. If we talk about how we want to cover ball screens and scout, being disciplined and following that scout important, not gambling, that's discipline. You know, doing what you're supposed to do off the court, being what you're supposed to, being what you're supposed to be on time, um, respecting yourself, the university, and the athletic department, um, just around campus, things like that. That's being disciplined. We're talking with head coach Landon Bussey here on the pregame show as the Braves take on Xavier. Coach, we shot 40%. Talk about the shot selection against Arkansas. I didn't know we shot for. I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, you just, I mean, any shot you get, you want to take it just because if you don't know if you never, you're going to get a good shot again in that possession. So it's really hard to evaluate your offense, your defense. But one thing I can tell you, I didn't like. I didn't like our. Um, we we lost every 50-50 ball. Now that's that has nothing to do with the level. That has us to do with our heart and our toughness. And I don't think we're we're a very tough basketball team right now. I think we're talented. And I think the guys, you know, talent has gotten them so far. Now it's starting to affect them a little bit in this program because now your toughness has to come up. Yeah, and you really don't back down when it comes to that toughness, even in the shoot around today. Two days after the long Arkansas trip, uh, you're full tilt mode. This every day, Mr. Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This every day. This, this, I know you have, you know, you've been, you know, yeah. Working with football, so you know you haven't been really. This is every 
single day, 365 days out of the year, 24-7. Yeah. With, this, with this team, with some of the new pieces, and of course the returners, do you think, you know, all the grind of August and the summer and uh, preseason camp and the first, you know, the, the exhibition games, do you think your players have kind of gotten used to the grind, the everyday grind? Because with you, it's six months ago, five months ago in July when you had six players here working them out. You were in regular season mode then. So this this is not a surprise to me. But to some players, just the level of it, because these games count now, is it still kind of a, a, a back and forth in trying to get your players to buy in and get used to the grind and the intensity every practice, every game, every pregame meal, every lift? Is it still kind of a, a challenge for some of these guys? It is. Um, it is. You know, a lot of guys, you know, trying to tell these guys, they got to look themselves in the mirror at some point. They got to look themselves in the mirror at some point. They got to they look themselves in the mirror. They got to be tough. They got to look themselves in the mirror. But the biggest thing is right now is guys got to just continue to buy in and do what they're supposed to do. In the course of a season, when you talk about buy in, how long does that usually, does it take the dive conference grind, the, the long rides, the, the ballrooms in which you're watching film and just the tough games, tough road games, tough environments that's going to toughen you up anyway. Does it take that or should it take that for you? You would think that from day one, from the first whatever, but uh, that, that's always a challenge. How long does it take to buy in, do you think, as a, as a coach? About four years. It's the fourth year. You know, typically say take take four years to turn, pro, turn around the program. So this is the year that we got to, you know, guys got to buy in. It's the year that, you know, expectations to win the championship, you know. So um, everything right now is building up for the SWAC tournament. It's not one thing that we do right now that's building up just for regular season. This, we're taking step by step as far as tough coaching, as far as um, attention to detail, as far as doing what you're supposed to do. Everything is a build up. Everything is a build up. Everything is a build up for the SWAC tournament. A lot of fans feel like the turnaround, you've already done it with the exception of winning the, the tournament, obviously that's the big prize. But a lot of people feel like, you know, we're here, we're there, we're, we're right in the mix. What do you say to folks who say, you know what, we're, we're okay. I know as a coach you always want to elevate, but a lot of fans feel like we are right, we're there. I mean, I, I haven't reached my goals for myself, the athletic department, for my men's basketball team, for the university. I haven't, I haven't met the goal yet. Um, for what we have done, I'm good, but I haven't met um, the goals when I accepted the job here. And, and I, I just haven't, you know, I haven't got the job done as far as the goals I set. Now, I, I, I accomplished some goals, but the main goal has not been accomplished. Of course, the main goal here tonight is Xavier. Uh, you know, just coming off the Arkansas game, Jeremiah Gamble with 17 points. Coach, talk about his first uh, regular season game as a Brave, the 17-point outing he had. Um, I think it's just more so of a situation to where as though he's a guy who has been on that stage before. Um, this is his fifth year in college basketball. He's not afraid of the moment. Um, and now he has a guy as in Byron who can create and find for him. He has a guy, um, you know, last year he played a lot of the one. I think he feel more comfortable on the wing. So I think that his, his comfortability is a little better now. Despite the score, we were missing some pieces. Uh, Thorne was out. Um, just talk a little bit about the status of some of the guys that, that were kind of on the sideline for the uh, game against Miles. What are their expectations to play here tonight? Jeremiah, Kendall, Thorne. To talk about those guys and status for this evening. How much game. time? How much time we got before the game start? <laughs> game time decision. Yeah, you, you come talk to me right right before you see me walking out, and I'll let you know that. But I know DK is playing, um, but you know, um, like I said, well he's supposed to play. But you know, you just gotta, you know, guys, you know, I don't know, guys got to do what they're supposed to do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lighten up. It's, it's, it's not what this program is built of. I'm not going to lighten up. I'm going to make sure that these guys understand that these are life experiences. Got to do your job. Point blank period. Mr. Charles, if you don't do your job, what's going to happen? Uh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> there you go. We can, we can talk two hours about it if I don't do my job. Right. There you go. <laughs> Um, points in the paint, Coach, minus two there. Talk about how we're able to battle in the painted area. Well, we was only minus two? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, like I said, I, I really, you know, that whole game to me was a little blur just due to I did not think that we competed to the level of
toughness. I think we did a good job, but we like you know the fifty fifty balls. You know, I, I'm not a fan of, of us losing. And we welcome you back to the Whitney Arena. We'll hear more from Landon Bussey as we roll along through the first half. At halftime, don't forget, we'll talk with Athletics Director Robert Reigns. Gray's lineup being introduced. Steven Byer, the junior from Atlantic City. Byron Joshua, second leading scorer against Arkansas. Alex Tenevich, the junior from Belarus. Jeremiah Gambrell, the grad student getting the start. And Roderick Massanat, the grad student from Trenton, New Jersey, getting the start. So, Bayer, Joshua, Stanevich, Gambrell, and Massanat, the start for this Braves team. For Xavier, the goal rush, the starting lineup, T.J. Jones, the grad student from Opelousas, followed by Corey Wells, the 6'7 senior from Murphy, Texas. In the starting lineup, Chris Ward, the 6'9", fifth-year student from New Orleans, followed by Jason Ross. Ross is 6'1", junior from Bossier City, Louisiana, and rounding out the lineup, Lance Williams. This team is 2-0. They beat Dillard 86-67, and they beat the College of Biblical Studies 79-64. Of course, we'll hear from Landon Bussey and what Xavier meant to him as a player when he played for this Xavier program. Xavier and the goal, they brought their cheerleaders. Their cheerleaders were here. And of course, uh, late the all court cheerleaders to my left are here. Kind of a swag feel a little bit. Sinevich will jump center for the Braves in the purple. And he'll be opposed by Ward. The Braves will head to Arkansas State. They'll play Arkansas State on Tuesday at 7 o'clock from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Be there. That's the next action for the men. Then next Thursday, they'll play at UAB. I'll be there for that one. So we've had Lady Braves action, now men's action. And then the Lady Braves will play the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. They'll play at... New Orleans, I'll be there to bring you that one. So football, men's and women's basketball in the grinder right now. Ward and Stanevich will jump center. And we're ready. Both players anxious. Stanevich was the tip and Xavier with the basketball. The goal rush with Jalen Ross. Ross top of the circle. Ross right wing. Top of the circle, Jones. The Braves double here at the start. Almost a three attempt by Jones. Cutting across the lane, one-hander is too strong. And the Braves fired with the rebound. Out to Joshua getting it up quickly. And we've got a clock issue right off the bat. As Massa not having a word with head coach Landon Bussey. They'll reset the clock. Byard far sideline for the Braves in the purple. From left to right. Byard to Joshua. Just underway. Scoreless here from the Whitney Arena. Glad you can join us. However way you might be joining us, listening or watching. Byard uh, gets in Stanevich and he is tied up. And the boys will get the ball in the dual possession with 17 to shoot. Joshua baseline left for the Braves. Joshua looking in. Now here's a tough fadeaway three. No good by Gamble. Weak side rebound. Called in by Lindsay. And now we got another clock issue. Twenty-eight on the shot. Lance Williams far sideline. Williams. Top of the circle, Ward. Ward on the handoff, Lindsey. An extra pass. And with it on the far side is Corey Jones. Dumps it off. 
And a strip by Masanat, but he had it on the baseline, coming down with it out of bounds. 16 to shoot. 55 seconds in. Lance Williams baseline left. Lance Williams, who comes up off the curl, that was past top of the circle, Lindsey. 13 to shoot, get it in. Williams on the kick out, here's Ross for three. Got it, rattles it home. Jathan Ross gives Xavier an early lead. Braves are down 6-2 to Miles early before they got it going. Three nothing Xavier here. Masanat on the handoff. Masanat, screened by Sinevich. Masanat on the skip pass, Joshua. Joshua between the legs, dribble, going right. Joshua, tough floater. No, weak side rebound, Jones. Three nothing, Xavier, Corey Jones. Top of the circle, Williams, back to Corey Jones. Screen, Ward, and the dump in. Little jab, step, spin, the up and under, cut off, skip pass, Ross another three, nope. Rebound, Masanat, out ahead, Joshua, and another clock issue. Another clock issue here. Oh, Landon Bussey takes an early timeout. I thought it was a clock issue. Landon Bussey calling early timeout. Well, I will say this. Landon Bussey was very active, very animated in shoot around today. The buy-in is still a challenge for his players into Landon Bussey, what he wants to do. And he made it very clear in shoot around today, either you buy in or you know what's next. So Landon Bussey getting an early timeout here, minute 55 in, three nothing. And Landon Bussey's gonna work you, he's gonna ride you, he's gonna coach you hard. And we're sitting to the right of the Braves bench and, and Landon Bussey not happy as he took an early timeout. Three nothing Xavier, I thought it was a clock issue again, but Landon Bussey took a timeout. It's one of the earliest timeouts I've seen him take two minutes in. Zinevich dumps it inside, and the first layup, good! Bayard puts the Braves off the board. 3-2, Xavier. Williams, fronted by Masternat. On the skip pass, Jones. 3-2, Xavier. Lindsey, top of the circle, Ross. Ross, kick out inside, and a foul call is Joshua. Foul Ward, he was gonna dunk it. Byron Joshua with his first. Full slate of games here on this Wednesday. Landon Bussey, Ross Smile talking with the referee. Thought he might have got all ball there. But Chris Ward at the free throw line for Xavier. Ward, the 6'9", 50th student from the Bronx, New York. Shawnee Community College transfer. First free throw is up, and it's short. Second free throw coming up. The gold rush of Xavier with a three to two lead. Second free throw coming up. And this one high in the air, too long. And Joshua with the long board. Three, two, the Braves trail by one here in the first two and a half minutes of this first half. Joshua, Sinevich, right wing for Belarus. Sinevich trying to back down. Nothing there, hands it off to Joshua. Joshua, Sinevich, jump stop. And we've got a foul called. A foul called. It's going to be on steel. And up it's on Lindsay is first. I thought he said five. So Lindsay. And at the line is Alex Stanevich, the junior from Minsk, Belarus. At the line. First free throw rattles in and out. Second free throw coming up. Two teams combined, 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Second free throw on the way with 250 into this first half. Xavier three and Alcorn three as Stanevich. 
Fakes the free throw, we're tied at three. 2.50 in. Uh, getting it up quickly is Jones. Jones, fronted by Bayard. Jones on the handoff, the kick out. Here's a three, it's up and it's good. Three pointer in the corner, Jeremy Lindsay. Lindsay, the senior from Covington, Louisiana, puts the goal rush up six to three. Here in the early going. The crowd here at the Whitney Arena on this Wednesday. Down the dribble handoff, Gamble, his floater is up, no. Stadevich had it, lost it, he was bumped off the spot. And Xavier coming right back in the half court with Russ. Russ out top, Lance Williams. Head coach Alfred Williams in his eighth season as the head coach of the goal rush. 6-3 Xavier. Great some good D right here on this possession. Jones going left, kick out in the corner, step back three. That's good. Three-pointer Ross, his second triple. All threes for Xavier, a 6-0 run. 9-3, Xavier with the lead. Joshua on the handoff, Gambrel. Far wing, Masanat. 6-0 run by Xavier. Masanat on the attack, trying to drop it off, and shot blocked. Byard had it blocked, got it back, fouled. So free throws coming up. As the foul called, it's going to be on Ward, his first, second team. And we have our first media timeout. Xavier with a 9-3 lead. First media timeout with 15-49 remaining. We'll take a break here. Don't forget, at the half, A.D. Robert Reigns will join us, talking all things athletics. We'll talk about the situation with uh, the Texas Southern game being moved to Sunday. How did that happen, you ask? A lot of dynamics in play. He'll talk about it at the half. We'll be back after this. Timeout, 9-3 Xavier. This is Braves Basketball. One down and two to go for Coach Beck and the ASU Braves. The Braves defeated the Jaguars this past Saturday to take hold of the number one spot in the West. It's now headed to the Lone Star State as the Braves take on the Tigers of Texas Southern in a Sunday matchup. You heard me right, a Sunday matchup. Pre-game 130, kickoff two. Join Charles, the voice of the Braves, Edmonds, and D. Emmanuel Bonds for all the play-by-play. Cedric Tim, the sideline reporter, and Jamari Chavez, which producer. It's ASU football on WPRL 91.7 FM and WPRL.org. WPRL 91.7 FM is home of Braves football. Remember, it's a Sunday matchup. Don't you miss it, baby. The Braves and the Tigers. You could tell my heart, you could be bold. I'll stand up if you love it, purple and gold. Purple and gold. Kid, prayer, who, and the I love so you can't get enough of that stuff. Glad you could join us here for Braves basketball. Busy week coming up. Football on Sunday. Basketball next week. And then Jackson State next week. Nine to three here at the start of this one. First media timeout. Xavier with three triples. Jason Ross with two triples. Lindsey with the other. Fired at the free throw line for the Braves. And the first one is no good. And the Braves are one of three from the free throw line here at the start of this game. Second free throw coming here with 15.49 left first half. 9-3, to three, Xavier with the lead. You know, Landon Bussey talked about the fact that, you know, when you're playing these games at home, second free throw, no, and the Braves are struggling from the line. Bayer got it back, and Floater too strong. Ball out of bounds, the remaining Braves basketball. Braves one of four from the free throw line as Bayard will have a seat. And checking in is Jalen Hawkins. Here's Joshua, pull up on the elbow, good. Joshua, second bucket for the Braves. And they're now nine to five in this first half. Xavier Ross, cross it half, core double. Ross on the skip pass, oh, wide open layup and it's good. It was a double, Lindsey driving baseline, lays it up, 11 to five. You throw it over the top of the defense. Lindsey 
Makes it an 11-5 game. 15-10 left first half. Joshua dribbles to the left wing. Joshua on the dump in. Jeremiah Kendall out top here. The three Hawkins, no. All right, Kendall got it back on the nice dump in. Out of bounds, deflected out of bounds. Pass intended for Mike Pajud, who's in the game for the first time. So Kendall Pajud, Jalen Hawkins the lineup with Thorne and Joshua. Joshua baseline right. Thorne with the pull up, no. And a loose ball, Xavier. They leak out here. Here's Ross. Ross out top, Williams. Williams putting the double team and a reach in. It's going to be the, on Pajud or Joshua. It's on Pajud. Pajud with his first. Second team foul on the Braves with 14.47 left in the first half. Bunch of games on the women's side, Jackson State. Lady Tigers 73, LeMoyne Owen 21. Texas leads Southern 7 to 4. There's a pass out top, almost stolen. With it is Lance Williams. Extra passing, there's a pull up three, short by Jones. Loose ball, 50 50 ball, and Pajou fouled. Fouled by Corey Jones, his first, third team foul. Oregon and UAPB. Lady Lions led Oregon State, let it slip away in the second half. Now the Lady Lions taking on Oregon. Game will start in the next 45 minutes. 14 and a half left first half. 11 to five, Xavier with the lead. Another clock issue here, and they'll reset. And Joshua will hand the ball to the referee. And Pajou will inbound. Back to Joshua in the backcourt. Jeremiah Kendall left wing. Kendall looking for Thorne. Not there. Kendall had it poked away. Play backed up by Hawkins. Hawkins trying to back down. Three dribbles. Fadeaway baseline. Tough shot. No. And Xavier comes up with it. Thorne gets it. A pull up for three. No. And it's tracked down in the corner by Jones. Jones on the skip pass. Chad Jones. You got a TJ and a Corey Jones for Xavier. 11 to 5. TJ Jones foul the reach in, and it's going to be on Pajud, and he picks up his second. 13 48 left. Braves had, had not a lot of clean looks, not a lot of inside work. And Sinevich gets the start, and then Kimball coming in for him. And it is Jones. Corey Jones, top of the circle. Corey Jones, a screen goes left. Jones are behind him. TJ Jones, one on one. TJ uh, throws it, almost threw it away, but Chad Jones saves it. Jacks it up for three. No. And the rebound, Hawkins. Hawkins, Joshua. Joshua in traffic, and a reach in. And it's going to be on Xavier. T.J. Jones with his first. 14 foul. 14 foul for Xavier. Three for the Braves. 13-26 left in the half. 11 to five. I think the Braves' defense is decent. Offensively, can we get some sort of rhythm here? Byron Joshua, one on one. Pull up for three, short. And an easy rebound hauled in by Joe Cook in the lineup for Xavier. Right, it's Williams, dribbles out of a double. Williams in traffic. Williams drops it off, gets it inside, and ball stripped. And Bajud, Bajud on the outlet, Thorne gets it in to Kendall, he dumps it home. Yeah, by Kendall, the senior, makes it 11 to seven. Xavier with 12.50 left in the first half. Well, the Braves got a test from Miles when they were here. And so far, Xavier giving the Braves a pretty good test. 11-7, now we have a pocket pick. Here's Joshua, will lay it up and in. Timeout. So the Braves with four unanswered. With 11-9 with 12.36 left. And it's a 30-second timeout taken by eighth-year head coach 
Alfred Williams in his eighth season. As we look at the SWAC scoreboard, some late games preview will play at Seattle, Southern UNLV, Jackson State, San Diego. So a light men's scoreboard here tonight. A heavier, a little bit heavier women's slate. 10 to four, Texas over Southern University. Jackson State in the third quarter leads them on, on 75 to 27. And coming up at eight o'clock, UAPB at Oregon. Well, the Braves will make a substitution here. Jockey Gaines Wyatt, the freshman from Wondach, New York, into the lineup for the Braves with Kendall Hawkins, Thorne, and Pajud. 11 to 9, the Braves trail. There's a pass over the top, intercepted. Well, the Braves defense causing havoc. Jalen Hawkins had it stripped from behind. Xavier Latavian Crockett knocked it away. Williams for Xavier. Williams, DJ Jones off the screen, pull up on the elbow, rattles out off the shoulder of Thorne, all stripped and almost saved by Lindsay, who fell out of bounds with 12.04 left in the first half. Pajou baseline, as the Braves will have to go the full length of the floor. Well, the Braves defense imposing their will here over the last couple of minutes. 11 to nine, Xavier with the lead. Wyatt dribbles to the left wing. Wyatt beyond three, Kendall on the dump in. Kendall fronted by Ward, his floater, good. Jeremiah Kendall with his second bucket. We're tied at 11, a 6-0 run here by Alcorn after trailing 11 to five. Now Xavier handles the pressure, getting it in the middle, and now left wing, Lindsey. Lindsey fronted by Hawkins. We're tied at 11, 11.26 left. Lindsey on the attack, his floater is up, no. And the foul called on Hawkins. Up. And the foul called on actually Kendall. Kendall with two shots. So with Landon Bussey taking, or Xavier taking the timeout, it wipes out the 12-minute media. So at the free throw line is Jeremy Lindsey. Lindsey, the senior, at the line. He's got five points. We're tied at 11. Free throw is up, and it's good. Lindsey with six, and Xavier up one, 12-11. 11-23 left in the first. Half. Lady Longhorns lead Southern University 15 to five with two and a half left in the first quarter. Second free throw coming up. Lindsay with six points. Second free throw is up, it's too long. So Xavier one of four from the free throw line. And the Braves one of four. 20 to shoot, 12-11, 11-12 left in the first half. For the Braves, Wyatt. And now here's a pull up, no good by Kendall, trying to follow his old miss, could not. And now Xavier leaking out. Now the handoff, Williams. Williams going to the rack and Kendall fouled him, his second. Kendall in pursued with two personals apiece. 10-57 left. We have free throws coming up. Lance Williams at the free throw line. The 6'1 junior from Baton Rouge, St. Michael. Stepping up for Xavier. Don't forget Braves football coming your way. Sunday at 2 o'clock, we'll have the Alcorn pregame show at 1.30. First free throw is up and good for Lance Williams. At the half, we'll talk more basketball. We'll hear from Landon Bussey, as well as Andre Payne, talking about this team. And next week, we'll talk Lady Braves basketball. I see Nate Kilbert in the stand, so I think he's gotten over his pneumonia. 
in the first half. The Braves handle the pressure. Thorne, skip pass, Pajou, quick ball movement, Joshua left wing. 15 to shoot. 14-11, Xavier. They scored three unanswered. Now Joshua lost it, got it back, six to shoot. Joshua on the skip pass. And now here's a floater up short by Jalen Hawkins. With the loose ball is Williams. 14-11, the goal rush with the lead as we approach the halfway point of this first half. In traffic, Lindsey slipped. Ball kicked out. Here's a three in the corner. Ross, no. Rebound, Thorne. 10 on five left. Here's Byron Joshua on the attack. Joshua, his one-hander, no. And a we'll foul, a blocking foul. A couple of free throws coming up for Byron Joshua. The foul called on Lance Williams, his first. Uh, 14-11, halfway through this first half. All right, with Joshua at the line. So far, it's been a struggle from the free throw line. Free throw is up, and it's good. Byron right, Joshua with five points. Second free throw coming up. The Braves lost 93 to 59 to Arkansas in game one. Second free throw coming your way. And this one is good. Joshua with six, Kendall with four, and halfway through the first half, the Braves are within one. Yeah, ball, you know, out of bounds. And it'll remain Xavier's basketball. Halfway through the first half. Trying to inbound the basketball. It's Corey Jones, ball knocked away. And Thorne called for steps. And Landon Bussey said that is not a travel. You know, I was talking with Landon Bussey about the schedule. You know, you try to get games at home, and Landon Bussey doesn't believe in cupcakes at home. He's going to play teams that he feels like is going to give his team a test. He just he feels like there's no value in it. And we've seen these games, now we got a foul called as Thorne or Trevin Stoutmeyer double team. Thorne call for the first. Trevin Stoutmeyer, the junior from Birmingham, in for the first time for the Braves. Lance Williams, far sideline. One point Xavier Lee with 9.56 left in the first half. Well, the Braves defense has been a problem for Xavier. They've got a wet spot on the floor, a couple of wet spots, and they'll clean that up. Halfway through the first half. 14-13, Xavier. Xavier with the basketball. Glenn on in the lineup. Lance Williams off of screen, he's double. Williams, top of the circle, Jones. Getting it inside, the teardrop is up, that's no good. And stick back now out of bounds. It'll remain Xavier's basketball with 9.39 left here in the half. 9.39 left, first half. 18 to shoot. One point lead for the goal rush. Coach Williams thought it should have been a goal 10 in previous possession for his team. Now the give and go, a double team to pass deflected out of bounds with 11 to shoot. <laughs> 11 to shoot, nine and a half left. First half, 14-13. Inbound Lindsey, eight to shoot. Now the attack is Jones. His pull-up is good. Corey Jones with the... <laughs> 16-13, Xavier. 
Well, again, Landon Bussey was looking for a test. He got it. As Wells with his first bucket, 16-13, and now we've got a foul. And it's going to be on Xavier's Glenn Roan, the senior from New Orleans. Roan with the foul, his first. Checking in for the Braves, Jeremiah Gamble in for Mike Pajun. Landon Bussey talked about the fact that everything we do, we've got a whistle and another clock issue here. As Rodrik Masinat will check in. And now we got an offensive foul called. It's going to be on the Braves, and it's going to be on Trevin Steinermeyer, his first. Steinermeyer will pick up his first. And Kevich will check in for the Braves. Alex Tinkovich. Tinkovich in. Three point lead for Xavier. Now on the attack, floater is good. Going to the rack for Xavier is Lindsay. Lindsay is third field goal. He's got eight. And after tying it at 13, Xavier with five on answer. They lead 18 13 with 8.40 left in the first half. Masanat gives it to Joshua. Joshua double. Masanat left wing. Faked on a three. Masanat cut off. Gets it back to Joshua out top, Thorne with five to shoot. He'll jack up a deep three, no, against the clock. And Williams with it for Xavier. 8.20 left in the first half, 18-13, the goal rush. Lance Williams, double. Now Lindsey beyond three on the attack, the up and under floater, good. Wells gives Xavier a 7-0 run, and they lead 20-13 with eight to play in this first half. Braves had a little bit of a spurt, but Xavier with a 7-0 run at the moment. Joshua, short left point on a double, and we got a foul called. And it's gonna be on Xavier, the timeout coming up here. And the foul is on Roan is second. First player with two, timeout on the court. With 7.50 left in the first half, Xavier on a 7-0 run, and they lead 20 to 13. We'll be right back after this. This is Braves basketball. One down and two to go for Coach Beck and the ASU Braves. The Braves defeated the Jaguars this past Saturday to take hold of the number one spot in the West. It's now headed to the Lone Star State as the Braves take on the Tigers of Texas Southern in a Sunday matchup. You heard me right, a Sunday match up. Pre-game 130, kickoff two. Join Charles, the voice of the Braves, Edmonds, and D.D. Emmanuel Bonds for all the play-by-play. Cedric Tim, sideline reporter, and Jamariel Chavez, which producer. It's ASU football on WPRL 91.7 FM at WPRL.org. WPRL 91.7 FM is home of Braves football. Remember, it's a Sunday matchup. Don't you miss it, baby. The Braves and the Tigers. You could tell my heart, you could be bold. I'll stand up if you love it, purple and gold. Purple and gold. Can't pray to who and be I love. So you can't get enough of that party stuff. And we welcome you back to the Davy Whitney Arena. Glad you could join us on WPRL and WPRL.org. And watching us online, allcornsports.com. Xavier, 20, Allcorn, 13. 7.50 left in the first half. Braves come out of the hustle with Masanat. Roderick Masanat in the lineup with D.K. Thorne. Stephen Bayard, Jeremiah Gambrell, and Byron Joshua the lineup. Joshua at the line for the Braves. Joshua, 5 of 6 coming in, 83% from the free throw line. Byron Joshua, 2 for 2, 6 points. First free throw is up. It is good. Rattles home. He's got 7. So Joshua with 7. Kendall with 4 for the Braves. 
20 to 14 Xavier. Second free throw coming. Second is up and it's good. Joshua, four for four from the line, eight points, and it's a five point game. 20 to 15, walking it up is Lindsey. He's got eight points for the goal rush. Lindsey, top of the circle. Lindsey on the attack is blown up. No, and he's fouled. From top of the circle to the front of the rim, and Bayard will pick up his first. And Jeremiah Kendall at the line. Well, Jeremiah Kendall set to check in as Lindsey at the line. First free throw is up, and it's good. Lindsey, two for three from the line, nine points. 21-15, Xavier. Jalen Hawkins will check in. Bayard will check out. Massanat will check out. And Jeremiah Kendall in for the Braves with 7.38 left in the half. Second free throw is up, and that's good. Lindsey in double figures, and the Braves are down seven. 22-15, seven and a half minutes left in the first half. Joshua, lob the thorn, quickly gets it to Hawkins. The Braves settle into their offense as Joshua holds it. 15 to shoot. Byron Joshua, top of the circle. Now here's a three, short. By Gamble, gets it back. His shot blocked out of bounds with 17 to shoot. 7-12 left in the first half. Xavier with a 22-15 lead. Joshua lobbed to Jeremiah. Kendall, Kendall on the attack. Kendall had it blocked out of bounds by Ward with 13 to shoot. On the goal rush not making the post easy for the Braves. Joshua baseline right. Kendall on the jump in. Joshua, his shot reverse layup is good. Joshua with 10. Well, he's our offense right now, 22-17. Joshua with 10 of the 17, and Lindsey with 10 for the goal rush. Let's see if the Braves can get a couple of stops. 22-17, the Braves have trailed by as many as seven in this game. 6.46 left in the first half. Williams, now on the drive, and just the easy layup, good. Chance Ward, it's just too easy. Ward on the baseline. Lead up to seven, 24-17. Six and a half left in the first half. Joshua left wing. Joshua, one-on-one -on -one with Ross. Joshua, here's Thorne, and he's fouled. Well, they're clinging to the Braves offensively. And the foul's gonna be called on Williams, his second. 6-19 left in the half. 24-17. As Peugeot will check in, Massanat will check in, and Cameron Butler will check in for the first time, the junior from Vicksburg. Then okay. we'll check out, Gambrel will check out, and Jalen Hawkins will check out. Gambrel was the leading scorer against Arkansas on Monday. E.K. Thorne at the line for the Braves. First free throw by Thorne, that rattles out. One well, of the Braves struggling from the line here in this half. The Braves turn up the pressure, Xavier handles it, seven point lead, double here. Quick ball movement and they get it right back to Williams. In the scout today, Landon Bussy says, if you gotta double him and get it out of his hands. Lindsey, Williams top of the circle. Williams one-on-one -on -one with Joshua. Williams on the attack. Williams gets it back to Ross. Ross lost it, and we got an offensive foul called on Ross. Nathan Ross is first. He tried to split the double. That's the ninth team foul on Xavier. T.J. Jones will check in. Race counter with Jeremiah Kendall. And for Massanat. 5.47 left in the half. The Braves have trailed twice by as many as 7, 22, 15, and 24, 17. This match is the biggest deficit the Braves have had so far in this first half. 
24-17 Xavier. Joshua, skip pass to Jude, bounce pass Joshua over the top of the defense. Cameron Butler, now Joshua. Joshua fronted by Williams, 17 to shoot. Gray spread the floor, now 24-17, five and a half left in the first half. Joshua left wing. Joshua, Kendall on the dump in. One, two dribbles, double. Splitting the double, tough shot, short, tip, no. Follow is good. Kendall stayed with it, his third field goal, he's got six. Five point game, 24 to 19. Five, 10 left in the first half. And Lindsay gets it out ahead to Wells. Back to Lindsay, left wing. Lindsay, Lindsay, left block, cut off on the baseline. Lindsay, TJ Jones, 10 to shoot. Jones, short right corner, right block. Floater is up, no, tip high in the air. Pajud with it for the Braves. Pajud on the attack. Gets it to Joshua, jack up a three, no. Foul called as Pajud was fouled from behind by Ward. That'll be his second personal. Ward, Williams, Rome with two personals. Pajud and Kendall with two personals. Masanat will check in with 4.38 left in the first half. He's down by five. And Pajud at the free throw line for the Braves. First free throw is up, and that's no good. Braves are struggling from the line here in the half. Pajud, three of four coming in. Pajud, his first trip to the line. Braves have missed five free throws. They're five of ten from the free throw line. This first half. Down 24-19, well that's the difference. Braves have missed five free throws, they're down five. Second is up and that's good. Pajud one for two, it's a four point game. 24-20, so after trailing by seven, the Braves have scored three unanswered. Xavier being patient here to get in the middle. And now Roan. Roan, Lance Williams. Now Roan on the dump in. Roan on the left block, Masa not fronting him. T.J. Jones, left wing, he'll hold it with 418 left in the first half. 24-20, Xavier, double running at him. Trying to go back left, does, lobs it inside. An extra pass, here's a pull up three, Williams, yes. The extra pass, Lance Williams for three. Four triples for Xavier, the Braves are down seven. Four to play in the first half, 27-20. Bourne gets the handoff, Cameron Butler with it for all corn. Butler on the handoff, James Wyatt. Wyatt on the attack, his floater off the window too strong. The ball saved, and Xavier with it. Now they're getting out to run. Here's TJ Jones in the corner, driving baseline. Ross dumps it off, and it was not great for Monsonot, but he got it back. Monsonot had it, had his strip stay with it. Now here's Wyatt. Wyatt, pull up on the elbow, good. James Wyatt, his first bucket. Five point game, well that was a good hustle play by Masanai, that could have been a bucket to put us down nine. 27-22 in the first half. Braves down five with 3.05 left. Williams, Williams short right corner on the attack. Williams pass deflected, loose ball, and it's Caroms to Thorn. 2.56 left in the half. Couple of hustle plays here. James Wyatt fouled. A reach in. And it's gonna be on Xavier and it will be on TJ Jones. That should take us to our media timeout. Ten team fouls. So the Braves left free throws the rest of the half, but they're struggling from the line. They're five of ten from the line. Timeout on the floor. 2.50 left in the first half. 27-22. Xavier. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. This is Braves Basketball. As a teacher, I should know the answers. But with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, answers don't come easy. Steroids made my gut feel better, but they brought symptoms and risks of their own. You know, we a friend told me about the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, and they helped me find a specialist. We talked through the pros and cons and landed on a new treatment. I feel like the guy with answers again. Don't wait. 
Make sure you have the latest info and the best plan for you. Spill Your Guts. Learn more at SpillYourGuts.org. Every 36 seconds, a vehicle is stolen in the United States. Cars are an important investment, and you have the power to protect it. Remove valuables from your car or place out of view. Roll up your windows completely. Don't leave your car running while unattended, especially during the winter. And always lock your doors and take your keys or fob with you. If you know something about a vehicle theft, call us at 1-800-TELL-NICB. This is a public service message from the National Insurance Crime Bureau. Let's see if the Braves can go on a spurt here. We've seen many a time where the Braves finish a half strong. Let's see if they can do that. Gains Wyatt at the line. Chalky Gains Wyatt, the freshman from One Dots, New York. At the line. First free throw is up, and it's good. Three points for him. And the Braves are down. Four down by the big down by as many as seven. Wyatt three of four from the line. The Braves as a team through the first game, 61% from the line. Second free throw is good. All right, the Braves are within three, 27-24. 250 left here in the first half. Xavier handles the pressure with the middle of the floor. They get it in the middle. Now Lindsey with it. Lindsey to Jones. It's Wyatt fronting him. Now on the attack, the one-hander short by Wells. Now here's Wyatt, nice crossover. Wyatt dribble drive, and he's fouled. Blocking foul on Xavier. A couple of free throws coming up here, and the foul called on Wells, his second. So Jones, Wells, Roan, Ward, and Lance Williams with two personals apiece, and Free throws coming up for Gaines Wyatt. So just like that, the Braves on a little run here, down 24 to 17. Now down 27-24, and the first free throw is no good. It's two for three. The Braves have missed six free throws in the first half. The Braves are down 20 to 13 at the eight-minute mark. So three times they've been down by as many as seven. Second free throw coming up, and that's good. Gage Wyatt, three for four from the line. He's got five. So Joshua with 10, Kendall with six, Wyatt with five, and the Braves are down a couple. 27-25 with 2.20 left in the first half. Now we got a double. And it's thrown off of Butler, but he got it. Butler to Joshua. Joshua's floater short. Gage Wyatt kicks it out. Now Masanat. Masanat left side. Do not fronted. The game's wide on the handoff. Two minutes left first half. The Braves can tie with a two. Go ahead with a triple down a couple. For the Braves, Pajud, Joshua. Joshua in traffic is here dropped. Good, oh, caught it. Joshua with the bucket. And one. Joshua with 12 has tied the game. Count the back, the bucket. Ross with... His second. So the Braves have tied it up 27 all. 27 all, 149 left in the half. So a bunch of players for Xavier with two personals. Free throw is up and it's good. Joshua with 13. Braves by one, 28-27. 145 left in the first half. Now here's a pass to act away. Now Xavier gets it. He tried to throw it over the top of the pressure. Braised by one. Now the up and under. The floater is good. The bucket by Wells. His third field goal. And Xavier back up by one. 29-28 with 120 left in the first half. Masanat. Joshua, nice spin. Off balance, floater short. Joshua with the follow, and he scores. 15 for Byron Joshua in the half. 30 to 29, Alcorn with the lead. A minute left in the first half. Now 
On the attack, Lindsay had it poked away. Butler knocked it away with 59 seconds left. So the Braves have rallied from seven down. Have the lead with a minute left in the first half. 30-29. Now reset the shot clock. 26 to shoot. Referee tells Pajou to tuck his jersey in. Down the dump in, the layup too strong. Follow no good by Wells. Got it back. Wells and a foul called Joshua as he collides with Lindsey. So Joshua with his second. So Joshua joins Pajou and Kendall with two personals. Although they call the foul actually on the guy collided with it, fouls on Lindsay. Lindsay with the foul. And for Lindsay, that's his second. I thought there was going to be on Joshua, to be honest with you. And Joshua at the line to try to give the Braves the lead. 52.9 remaining. 30 to 29. And head coach Alfred Williams is confused about that call as well. First free throw by Joshua missed. The Braves have missed seven free throws in this first half. Second coming up. And this one is good. 16 for Joshua. The Braves by two. 31-29. And now we've got a clock issue. Shot clock did not start. I'll put, they'll take three seconds off. 27 to shoot. We'll update the scoreboard coming up. A lot of late games as SWAC teams on the West Coast. Preview Seattle, Southern at UNLV, men's action. Uh, Xavier handles the pressure, they got the numbers. Now the pass on the wing, knocked away. Getting it is Williams. 14 to shoot. Now the baseline pull up short by Williams. And the Braves, Cameron Butler will get it. Shot and game clock even. Braves by two in the ball. 31-29 here in this first half. Byron Joshua, 16 points for all corn. 10 to shoot. Joshua top of the circle. Joshua fronted by Williams. Joshua off the Masanat screen, going to the rack, had it stripped. And now driving and just couldn't get up a shot is Lindsay. And that takes care of the half. 31-29, our score. The Braves with the lead. At the break, we'll take a one-minute break. A.D. Robert Lane will join us coming up after this. Timeout. This is Braves basketball. One down and two to go for Coach Beck and the ASU Braves. The Braves defeated the Jaguars this past Saturday to take hold of the number one spot in the West. It's now headed to the Lone Star State as the Braves take on the Tigers of Texas Southern in a Sunday matchup. You heard me right, a Sunday matchup. Pre-game 130, kickoff two. Join Charles, the voice of the Braves, Edmonds, and D.D. Emmanuel Bums for all the play-by-play. Cedric Tibbs, sideline reporter, and Jamari Chavez, which producer. It's ASU football on WPRL 91.7 FM and WPRL.org. WPRL 91.7 FM is home of Braves football. Remember, it's a Sunday matchup. Don't you miss it, baby. The Braves and the Tigers. You could tell my heart, you could be bold. I'll stand up if you love it, purple and gold. Purple and gold. It is halftime of Alcorn State University Braves basketball. Glad you can join us on the Braves Sports Radio Network. We have basketball action as the men coming off the Arkansas trip taking on Xavier of Louisiana. Of course, the Lady Braves took on Mississippi State. They'll be in Nebraska next week. I'll have men's action next week as the men take on Arkansas State. 
next Tuesday, and then at UAB next Thursday. The Jackson State game is next Saturday. So a lot of basketball and football action coming your way. And, of course, this Sunday, all Corn Braves football against Texas Southern. It's a Sunday game. It's a 2 o'clock game. And it's a big game as the Braves have control of the Western Division but have some more work to do. To talk all about that football and all things athletics is Alcorn Athletics Director Robert Raines joining us here at the half. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much uh, for having me, Charles. I know it's busy. I uh, wanted to, to catch you because you're always going, 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 and uh, it's a constant speed, 75, 80 miles an hour. It may slow down for a minute or two, but then you got to keep your foot on the gas. It doesn't slow down very often and very long, so, uh, you know, we've got to keep working. And um, right now we've got football still in full swing. A few sports have ended, but uh, basketball is kicking off, so we're getting ready to start it back up, gear it up again. Well, you know, football, let's, let's talk about that. It's, it's a huge, huge, huge next couple of weeks. We control our own fate for the Western Division. I've been getting calls every day the last few days. The scenarios, bottom line is we control the West, we handle our business, we'll be going to Tallahassee. Well, absolutely. I know we talked about this uh, earlier in the year. Um, I think there was a lot of uh, anxiety when we first started about where we might end up uh, at the end of this year, but this is pretty much where we figured that we would be, and we knew that the uh, coaching staff uh, would get us back here. And it's, it's good to be in a position where you um, – control your own fate, your own destiny. So uh, we're in the driver's seat. We're sitting number one in the West um, as we sit today. Uh, however, we still have some business to take care of with Texas Southern and uh, Jackson State. We can hoist that Western Division trophy with a win on Sunday and a Prairie View loss to Southern University. That game, by the way, on Saturday in Baton Rouge. So while we're traveling to Houston, we'll be able to keep tabs of that game. That's always fun to kind of sit back and see things play out knowing exactly what you have to do. So we'll be following all of that. Of course, as we know, the game against Texas Southern is on Sunday. want to talk to you about that because that's got a, a lot of folks kind of in a tizzy. Some have to make travel plans. Some on social media said they can't make it. They were expecting a Saturday deal. What, what's the process for that? When something like that happens, you know, when, when did, did you get the call about TSU situation with their pro soccer team having a playoff game that pushed the game on Sunday? When were you aware of all of that? I'm not sure about what the actual date that they uh, let us know, but uh, it was immediately after uh, the soccer team found out that they were in the playoffs, of course, and had to uh, play on, the, on that Saturday. So, uh, yeah, we all have had to uh, kind of make some adjustments and rearrange travel plans, even with the, uh, you know, with the teams. And the process, of course, uh, you know, they being the host team had to notify the conference office and uh, ensure that that approval happened. And I, I think in speaking with them, there were no other immediate options uh, at, this, at that late time to uh, try to make adjustments to keep it on Saturday. So that was pretty much our, um, the only way that we could make this happen was to do it on Sunday. So we tried to keep it at the same time at least. Uh, so that the travel plans wouldn't change. They would just change by the day, but not kind of interrupt the, 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 the day flow that the coaches already had in, in place for their itinerary. So. There's, there's a lot of assumptions out there. And, you know, on social media, people are saying, well, we should protest. If, they can, if we can't play it Saturday, then, you know, play it, play it at Alcorn. Um, then you got Del Mar Stadium, where Texas Southern has played their games in the past. You got Rice. You got other venues in Houston, but that's not exactly the way it works. And even though, could you have made the recommendation? Are you pretty much at the at the mercy of whatever Texas Southern, how they see that and how they prepare for that? Well, I mean, you're at the mercy of the the whole school. I mean, it's, it's their home game. It's their host. Uh, they're the host. Uh, same thing if if it was our home game and we had to move it to Jackson or to Natchez or a Vicksburg, you know, that would just be what it is. The visiting team would not have much uh, input on that decision. So, um, you know, we left, we're left with that and we're okay with it. Um, the adjustments, you know, we'll make the adjustments. Texas Southern has to make the adjustments as well. There'll be two teams on the field. 
so it, it, it doesn't just affect us. I know a lot of people are a little uh, concerned because it had to, you know, it kind of affected them as far as their travel plans. And being a Sunday, you know, that kind of even affects your start of your next week, uh, especially if you're traveling from any distance. Uh, you may have to miss Monday or miss the game, one or the other, miss work or miss the game. So, you know, I know that's been a bummer with some of our, you know, with our fans, but that's pretty much where we were left uh, relegated to. And we are talking with Alcorn Athletics Director Robert Raines uh, here at the half, just talking about that uh, the, the TSU situation. And, it, yeah, it, it, it does have a lot of folks, you know, kind of in a tizzy a, a little bit. What's the process, though? I mean, when, when that happens, if it happened to us or any school, you notify the school first, you notify the conference office first. What is the, the process? Well, they actually gave us a courtesy call first so that because they know that there are a lot of things that go into um, – making changes. So they did notify us uh, first as soon as they found found out that they would be um, making that change. And then we kind of talked through that scenario and um, they did advise that they would, you know, then contact the conference office and make sure that everything was uh, approved through the conference office before anything went out uh, publicly on it. So that was the process that we kind of went through. The, the SWAC, uh, is, is the SWAC just kind of rubber stamps it? Would they have any objections to it? If Texas Southern says, look, here's what's happening, here's how it's played out, the SWAC pretty much got to McClellan and uh, the crew over there, they pretty much will rubber stamp it if everything is decent and in order? Well, I would think that they would, and I don't know even if, if anyone object, objected it. I mean, what would be the options? Um, you know, I, I, I try to put the shoe on the other foot and say, okay, if we have that issue here, I mean, what are we going to do, not play the game? And we, we either would move it or not play it. And we definitely would need to play it. So um, we don't mind about playing on, on Sunday and moving it. We'll play it on Thursday. It doesn't matter. We'll play it on, on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, so we kind of go with the flow on it. And, um, you know, that's pretty much what the process is. And I can't see any objections that the SWAC office would have as long as they notified them in a timely manner. Because, you know, you do have to notify the officials and there are um, travel arrangements that a lot of people have to, not only fans and teams, you know, you have officials and the whole, uh, the whole game day operation changes. So uh, a lot of people have to be notified. And as long as that's done in a timely manner, I think everyone's okay with it. And there were some posts out there on social media, I guess fans not exactly thrilled with the decision. Play it, play it at all corners, switch it up. Texas Southern comes here and then we kind of change the schedule. That 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 is not uh, that's not reality. Is no, it? not at all. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to look at it like this too. Um, I mean, from an athletic administrative standpoint, this being a home game for uh, Texas Southern, they that, they've already factored in that into their operational budgets. That's what our budgets are built on is uh, projected yeah. revenue. So in order to, you know, to move that game to Alcorn means that they lose that that revenue, and, and the conference office is not going to mandate. Uh, any decision or make any decision that's going to adversely affect the school's bottom line. They, yeah. just, they just wouldn't get into that. So. Yeah. Well, that, as they say, that's the bottom line. And right. the bottom line on the back end of it, we have a long week to get extra day to get ready for Texas Southern. But on the other side of it, and, and by the way, we have played Texas Southern on a Sunday before in Jackson. We played them at Memorial Stadium. It's been, my gosh, about 20 <laughs> years ago we, we played on a Sunday at Memorial Stadium. I think it was part of a double header. I think Jackson might have played on a Saturday and we played on a Sunday. Um, I, I remember that vividly. But we got we got one less day to get ready for Jackson State. So it just adds a, a little bit more dynamic to the to the end of the regular season. Right, and, and, and that's the adjustment that uh, teams make. I mean, it, even in the NFL, you know, when they have to play a Thursday game, um, you know, somebody's going to always be have to make an adjustment that they really don't have to yeah. make. Someone's going to be at an advantage and one's going to be sort of at some at a disadvantage. But here again, as long as uh, the coaches and the teams are aware well enough in advance, they can kind of adjust their schedules to where they can make it work. And uh, our football team uh, practices on Sunday, and I think normally they'll have Monday off. It's the way they have been kind of doing it in the, in the past. So uh, they'll make the adjustment, and we'll be uh, we'll get ready for for Jackson State um, that Monday. Yeah, yeah. We're talking with AD Robert Rains at the half here 
Basketball season in, in full swing. Uh, tough starts for the Lady Braves and men. Landon Bussey's former school, uh, Xavier of Louisiana here. Just talk about the expectations for basketball. A lot of games on the road. The men have a, you know trips next week to Arkansas State, UAB. Lady Braves go to Nebraska. They'll have some home games here. But uh, what are your expectations for basketball as we crank it up? Well, you know, annually uh, with all of our schools, this is the time of year that, uh, you know, most of the contests are going to be on the road and they're, they're playing with larger schools and kind of working on some revenue opportunities there with game guarantees. And uh, come January, of course, that's when conference play actually starts. So, uh, you know, our anticipation, we always are anticipating a great year with basketball. I know that, uh, you know, Coach Bussey, of course, um, he's always eyeing a, a championship and he's always working to that effect. And, and, and we're expecting it there. But we're also expecting our women's team to kind of continue to rebound uh, as they have in, in the past. And Coach Nate and Coach Robinson and the women's basketball coaching staff, you know, they're working hard every day. And, They've had a pretty decent recruiting uh, year, so we're looking, anticipating that program to be more competitive uh, this season than it was last season. So we're excited about the upcoming basketball season as well. And, and historically, whenever, at Alcorn, whenever the football team has had a great year, seemingly the basketball team has a great year right behind it. So um, so we're, we're, we're looking for a great, 23-24 athletic year all the way around uh, throughout the entire season. Yeah, we haven't seen Coach Kilburn, and for good reason, he's had pneumonia. Yeah. So it's good that we haven't seen him, <laughs> <laughs> and he is, uh, is, he's expected to rebound as the Lady Braves get ready for Nebraska. One final question. Um, obviously, the home football season is complete. Great atmosphere against Southern University. Just talk about the home season and the fans, the support and all that. It was just a great atmosphere this past Saturday. It was great. And then the, the, the thing that was so outstanding about this season was the weather. Yeah. You know, we did not have a, a, a game that we were threatened by rain or lightning. Or, or lightning or freezing weather or anything. I mean, it was just a beautiful day Saturday here for the Southern, Southern game. Um, wasn't a cloud in the sky, no rain on the forecast. Uh, just, it wasn't too hot, wasn't too, you know, cool. Just a great football Saturday. That's Athletics Director Robert Rains. I'll post a full interview um, on my Facebook and uh, Twitter pages before the evening is over. As we get you ready for the second half, 31 to 29, our score. Great. Second chance points plus 10 and bench points 12 nothing all corn. Second half coming up. Lance Williams for Xavier. They'll get the ball to begin the second half. Williams started by Masanat. Masanat the starting lineup for all corn with Jeremiah Kendall. Bayard. Gamble. Here's the three in the corner. Short. And the three by Lindsay. The Braves always have found a way to start second halves in fine fashion. Let's see if that continues. Joshua with Byer in the backcourt. Jeremiah Kendall bounced off his football on the floor, and we're going to do a possession. So K 
Kendall, Bayard, Joshua, Masanat, Gambrel, the five for Alcorn. 35 seconds into the second half. Games coming up later this evening. Seattle hosting Prairie View, UNLV hosting Southern, and San Diego hosting Jackson State. Well, Jackson State, they played Memphis the other night, a trip from Memphis to San Diego. Two-point lead for the Braves. Matches their biggest lead. Here's Kendall with the spin. Pump fake. Well, no. Could not finish. And the foul called on Wood. His third. That's his third personal. First team. Jeremiah Kendall at the line for the Braves. Six points for Kendall. Free throws up, and that rattles out. The Braves have missed eight free throws, 11 of 19. Second free throw on the way. And that rattles home. Seven for Jeremiah Kendall. Braves with their biggest lead, 32, 29, 45 seconds into the second half. Lance Williams on the attack. Williams, scoop shot good. Lance Williams, his second field goal, he's got seven. One point game, 32-31. Jockey Gaines Wyatt will check in. He provided a spark in the half. Here's Bayard with the spin, his floater too strong. Kendall tried to follow, could not. Ball comes to Bayard, he had it stripped. Ball high in the air, loose ball. And Kendall with the first layup, good. Kendall with nine. I think a delay a game warning on Kendall. Minute 23, yep. For Jeremiah Kendall, a delay a game warning. And James Wyatt will check in for Joshua. Minute 23 into the second half. 34-31, the Braves. Three-point lead, and now, boy, the Braves really turn up the pressure here. Lindsay, offensive foul called. And Lindsay is the third. Second team. Landon Bussey is really seeing the defense have an effect on this team. Minute and a half in. The second half. 34-31, Kendall on the dump in. Kendall fronted by Wells, trying to spin, had it knocked away. And now Kendall and Wells is kind of going at it. And now Gamble pushes him away. And Landon Bussey just talking to Jeremiah Kendall. Wow, this is a good battle here, Kendall and Wells in the post. And Wells is like, what am I doing? I'm just biting him up. 18-14 remaining, 34-31, three-point lead. Gamble, Rocky Wells Wyatt, the freshman. Now Gamble, Kendall, Kendall on the baseline, his foul. And Leon Wells, his third. Wells can't handle Jeremiah Kendall. Foul on 13, Wells. And that's three. Team fouls on Xavier in the first two minutes of the second half. And now Corey Dunning will check in for the first time. TJ Jones will check in. Minute 55 into the second half. Jeremiah Kendall. Jab, step, drive, jump, look good. Kendall with 11. And the Braves by five, 36 to 31. Landon Bussey looking for a stop here. Les Williams, run by Massanat. TJ Jones. Jones pull up for three. Rattles out. Rebound by Art. By Art on the handoff. Gains Wyatt. Wyatt foul by Jones just trying to stop him. Two and a half minutes into the second half. Third. 
Jones with three. Wells with three. Ward with three. So some foul issues for Xavier. Two and a half minutes in. And the Braves have outscored Xavier 5 nothing here to start this second half. There's a pull up. Good in the corner. Jeremiah Kendall has responded. Kendall with 13. 38-31. Well, the Braves will pep in their step defensively. Jones. And on the left wing. Kick out TJ Jones. And here's a three. Good. Three pointer Lance Williams. And now a technical foul has been called. Williams with 10. So Lance Williams called for taunting after the three. So that makes it a four-point game, but some free throws by Gambrel. Well, in a game like this, there's some intensity, no question about it. Gambrel at the line. Gambrel scoreless so far. First free throws up, no. The Braves in this game have missed nine free throws. They're up by four. Second free throw for Gambro. He's got it. Five point game. 39 34. 16 55 remaining. Well, that cost Xavier a point with that three. Jockey gains Wyatt. Wyatt dribbles to the left wing. T.J. Jones guarding him now. Yeah, my Kendall double is Gamble for three. He's got it. Gamble for three, and the Braves up eight. 42-34. T.J. Jones with 20 to shoot. Jones lost it, got it back. Jones now on the attack. Extra pass, here's a three, no. All the flex in the paint. Ball carries right to Williams and lays it in. Well, the intensity has picked up, he's got 12. Williams makes it a six point game, four minutes in. Well, Landon Bussey going to the test, he got it. Thorne will check in, Hawkins will check in. James Wyatt, Jeremiah Kendall, Jeremiah. To Gaines Wyatt, bounce pass Kendall, fronted by Wells. Kendall back down the lean, the floater, no. Behind the backboard, retrieved by Corey Gunning. Uh, Wells, right wing, 23 to shoot. Wells, Williams on the dump in, Dunning, double pass to Williams on the baseline. Williams, lob out top deflected, and we got a foul called. And it's gonna be on the media timeout. We got a media coming up. I think the foul is gonna be on all corners. Gaines Wyatt, I believe. Nope. Foul charge number nine. Gaines yep, Wyatt. it is on Gaines Wyatt, his first. So six point game with 15 19 to play. 42-36, Alcorn over Xavier. We'll take a break, we'll be right back. This is Alcorn Braves basketball. Congratulations to the Tigers of Jefferson County on their first round win in the Mississippi High School Association 2023 playoff. They defeated South East Lauderdale County. And now standing in their way for round two is the Trojans of McGee High School. Now these two teams are no strangers to one another, so it should be a burn burner, baby, at Tiger Stadium. 6.45 pregame starts with the Tiger Radio Show. 7 o'clock kickoff. Join your award-winning play-by-play announcers. The Bozeman, Wendell Hurry, and yours truly for all the play-by-play. -play. And Jim Mario Shepard's books producer. It's the Friday Night Game of the Week on WPRL 91.7 FM and WPRL.org. 
WPOL 91.7 FM, home of Tiger football. It's the 2023 Mississippi High School Association playoff round two. Don't you miss it, baby. Let's go get them, Tigers. Clock to 20. Joshua baseline left. Joshua lobbed to Kendall. Kendall had the hot hand in the second half. Kendall on the attack is off bounds floater. No. And the weak side rebound hauled in by Lance Williams. Williams outlet TJ Jones. Jones dribbles left wing. Jones in traffic. His floater's up and it's good. TJ Jones has tied this game at 42. And here comes Xavier. 42 all with 13, 35 remaining. Joshua top of the circle. Joshua dribbles to the left wing. Joshua fronted by Jones. Gamble out top, screened by Thorne. Gamble lost it. Deflected. He deflected by Xavier no over and back. Joshua behind the back dribble, lost it to Steele. Steele for Xavier. Out top, Jones, and now Xavier can grab the lead. T.J. Jones on the switch. Joshua on him, T.J. Jones, step back three, no. And a rebound, called in by the Braves, Jalen Hawkins. 12.50 remaining, we're tied at 42. Hawkins on the attack, his floater blocked. Thorne with it, Thorne, now here's Joshua for three. Oh, that is out. Oh, but down for Joshua. Xavier trying to grab the lead. 12.37 remaining. We're tied at 42 here at the Whitney Arena. Last home game for the Braves until conference in January. Now there's a scoop shot short by Williams. Jeremiah Gamble, he'll pull up for three. No. Follow, no, by Joshua. He's fouled. 
foul is going to be on Wells. Uh, his fourth. Wells is fourth. 12-16 remaining. Byron Joshua at the line, 16 points. And for Joshua, six of seven from the line. First free throw is up, got it, 17 for Joshua. 43-42. Pajud will check in, Gamble will check out. Joshua looks, shake it up, he hit the deck hard. He's trying to shake it off. Looks like maybe his left leg. Second free throw coming up here with 12-16 remaining. One point all for lead. Second free throw is up, and that's good. 18 for Joshua. Braves back up two. 44-42 as we approach 12 to play in the second half. T.J. Jones dribbles to the left wing on the handoff steal. Still going right, he'll pull up a three. Nope. And the rebound stick back missed by Ken Williams. There's Joshua. Gambrel. And shot no good by Jeremiah Kendall. Follow no good. Ball back tap to steal. Two on one. Still the up and under layup. No nope. foul. Joshua is second. That'll take us to a timeout. 11.45 remaining. Should be a timeout. Yes, it is. 44-42. Good one here at the Whitney Arena. Allcorn and Xavier. Braves by two. We'll be back in one minute. This is Allcorn Braves basketball. My son Aiden has asthma. Secondhand smoke has triggered his asthma so badly, he ended up in the emergency room and spent multiple nights in intensive care. Now he's on a whole bunch of medications. My tip to you is, don't be shy about telling people not to smoke around your kids. Half of U.S. kids are exposed to secondhand smoke. If you or someone you know wants help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. Everyone has a community, a neighborhood, school, kids' teams, where you worship, work, work out, or any other place or group where you choose to belong. Communities can provide support when you need it and even when you don't know you do. Like when it comes to preventing underage drinking and other substance use, community members can be your eyes and ears when you're not with your kids and alert you to signs of potential problems. Joshua the lineup with Jalen Hawkins and Jeremiah Kendall. Second free throw short. For the Braves, Jalen Hawkins with it. Byron Joshua with 18 points to lead all scores. Jeremiah Kendall above the free throw line. Jeremiah, his teardrop is good. 15 for Kendall. So Kendall and Joshua have accounted for 33 of the 46 points. 46-43, three-point lead. 15 to shoot. Tracy Steele, still extra pass, and we've got a blocking foul called. It's gonna be on the Braves with 11 to shoot. And it's gonna be on Alcorn. the foul. 
11 is shooting, 11 minutes left. Trying to determine who the foul is on. And the foul is on Pajud, his third. T.J. Jones, that's on top of him still. And an extra pass, here's a three in the corner, good. Three-pointer, Ross. And we're tied at 46. 10.50 remaining, go, Xavier go. will not go away. Jalen Hawkins for the Braves, to Kendall back to Hawkins. Hawkins left wing. Hawkins, pass behind Joshua, recovers. Bounce pass for Jude, back to Joshua with it, nine to shoot. They spread the floor, seven to shoot. Joshua fronted by Steele, double. Joshua doubled, splits it, just puts it up. Oh, rattles out, that almost fell. Against the clock, Ross gets it out ahead. Ross gets it in the corner, another three. Nope, and Ward with the three and rebound Kendall. We approach the halfway point of the second half. We're tied at 46. Kendall with the teardrop, he's got it. 17 for Kendall. 48 to 46. All corn by two, halfway through. Well, Kendall's had a strong game. T.J. Jones left wing. Jones, his floater short. Got it back, follow, nope. Back tap, deflected, and here's Pajud. Hawkins, Pajud is knocked away. They tried the alley-oop, and now on the outlet, they got a two-on-one for a moment. Steal in the corner, here's a three. Oh, at the side of the backboard. Follow is up, no, it's gonna be a foul. No goal, Tim, but a foul on Hawkins. Xavier wanted a goal, Tim. Foul on Pajud is four. Pajud is four. Both teams playing hard. Xavier living beyond the arc, though. And at the free throw line is Torin Bell. 9.27 left. Trying to tie the game. First one's up, got it. His first point. One point lead for the Braves, 48 to 47. Second free throw coming up. Bell has been over. He is winded. Bayard will check in. Bayard with Thorn. Jeremiah Grant Gamble in for the Braves. Byron Joshua. Second free throw is up. Nope. And Jeremiah Kendall with it for the Braves. There's Joshua. Thorn for three. Got it. First bucket, 51 to 47. 20 to shoot, four point lead. There's Lance Williams, one on one with Joshua. Williams dribble drive, looking for a back door, not there, 10 to shoot. Now here's a three, that's good. Three by Ross, six for a triple. Work is a 51-50 game. 8.45 remaining. Jeremiah Gamble. 8.41 remaining. Brazel spread the floor. Landon Bussy wanted a test. He doesn't believe in cupcakes at home. Well, Xavier's no cupcake tonight. Eight and a half to play. Here's Thor on top of the circle. One point all for a lead. Joshua on the baseline. is pull up. Got it. Joshua with 20, and it's a three-point game. It's a full timeout. So we'll take a break with 824 remaining. Race 53, Xavier 50. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back. This is all for breaks, basketball. Huddle up, Seaspire Country. Jerry here with a new play called Connect and Protect. Kids, you get a plan with the phone you want. Yeah! 
Parents, you focus on defense using parental controls with free guided setup to easily track location, restrict content, and help protect kids from internet threats at any age. Yeah! Let's do this. Yeah! New Connect and Protect. Just $30 a month with AutoPay. Only from CSpire. Customer inspired. Capable device required. See CSpire.com for plan and promotion details. Everyone has a community, a neighborhood, school, kids' teams, where you worship, work, work out, or any other place or group where you choose to belong. Communities can provide support when you need it, and even when you don't know you do. Like when it comes to preventing underage drinking and other substance use, community members can be your eyes and ears when you're not with your kids and alert you to signs of potential problems. And we welcome you back to the Davey Whitney Arena as the Braves are up three, 53, 50. <laughs> I think Landon Bussy loves the effort and fight, but Xavier is battling as well. I think this is the type of game that Landon Bussy has been talking about. I mean, it's just the second game. He felt like this. The team had the fight the other night against Arkansas. I mean, look, Arkansas is one of the top 15 teams in the country. It's going to be a tough challenge. But the Braves, have, uh, the Braves are battling here, but so is Aiden. Three-point game with 8.24 remaining. And now still, still Bajoud. Now Masinat, Thorne is pull up. No, rebound Bajoud. Joshua will hold it. 8-10 remaining, three-point game. 53-50, 8.05 remaining. This game kind of has a swag feel to it. Joshua on the drive, shot blocked, out of bounds. Got the short corner with two to shoot. 7.57 remaining, and that's a timeout. So that was a full timeout, 30-second timeout taken as a full. Now we've got the media with 7.57 remaining. Two to shoot for the Braves, up three. We'll be right back after this timeout. Congratulations to the Tigers of Jefferson County on their first round win in the Mississippi High School Association 2023 playoff. They defeated South East Lauderdale County. And now, standing in their way for round two is the Trojans of McGee High School. Now, these two teams are no strangers to one another, so it should be a burn burner, baby, at Tiger Stadium. 6.45 pregame starts with the Tiger Radio Show. 7 o'clock kickoff. Join your award-winning play-by-play announcers, the Bonesman, Wendell Hurry, and yours truly for all the play-by-play. -play. And Jim Mario Shepard's books producer. It's the Friday Night Game of the Week on WPRL 91.7 FM and WPRL.org. WPRL 91.7 FM, home of Tiger football. It's the 2023 Mississippi High School Association playoff round two. Don't you miss it, baby. Let's go get them, Tigers. Seven fifty-seven remaining in this second half. 53-50, two to shoot for the Braves. They'll get it baseline right. Got to get something here. Two to shoot, Joshua on the baseline. Joshua looking for a duck in, not there. They get it inside of the dunk by Bayer. Bayer puts all court up 55 to 50. That's a big play, two to shoot. Joshua almost got a five second count. Five-point lead, 7.43 to go. And we've got a foul called on Bayer on the arm bar. His second. That's the, sec the fifth team foul, second on Bayer. Thorne, Pajud, and Masanat will check in for all corn. The offense, defense, substitution. And the Braves, Bayer will check out. Gamble will check out. Kendall will check out. Jalik will check in. Hey, 
7.43 remaining. Five point game. On the bounce pass, Williams with 18 to shoot. Williams left wing on the switch. Oh, there's a three. Good. A three pointer. Ross. His third triple in this half. He's got 15, and it's a two point game. 55-53 all corner with 7.25 remaining. Gaines Wyatt left wing on the handoff, Joshua. Joshua trying to get the short corner, double, he's backing up. Joshua, Thorn, Thorn front and bounce pass, Pajud, Pajud on the attack. Tough shot, oh, he's fouled. Oh, Pajud just fighting and battling. And the foul is on. Oh, it's the Lindsay and Wells with four. Roan, Ward, TJ Jones with three. Pajud with four. Now Pajud at the line where he's one for two. 707 remaining. Two-point lead. Free throw for the Pajud is good. It's two for three. Three-point all-point lead, 56-53, 7.07 remaining. Second free throw coming up for Pajou. The Braves will play at Arkansas State next Monday at 7 o'clock. I'll be in Jonesboro, Arkansas to bring you that one. Second free throw is good, 57-53, four-point lead. Seven minutes left. The Braves with pressure. Xavier handles it. With it for Xavier, top of the circle, Lindsay in the corner. There's another three. No good. Dunning with it. And ball lost out of bounds. It'll remain Xavier's basketball. Well, the Braves are trapping. Xavier's seeing that there's an open man and they're living in the corners. 17 to shoot. Timeout. Taken by Alfred Williams, Xavier grad, in his eighth season as a 2008 Xavier grad. And it's a 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout, Xavier. 30-second timeout. Good one here, 57 to 53 here in this second half. Tonight's presentation of all Corn State University Braves basketball brought to you in part by C-Spire. Huddle up, C Spire Country. Jerry here with a new play called Connect and Protect. Kids, you get a plan with the phone you want. Yay! Parents, you focus on defense using parental controls with free guided setup to easily track location, restrict content, and help protect kids from internet threats at any age. Yes! Let's do this. Yeah! New Connect and Protect. Just $30 a month with AutoPay, only from C Spire. Customer inspired. Capable device required. See cspire.com for plan and promotion details. Who else will step up? Joshua with 20, Kendall with 17, 37 of the 57 of those two here tonight. Ross, cut off, Ross, foul, Thorne, a little aggressive. A second. Thorne and Kendall with two as well as Joshua and Byer. Thorne is second. Lindsay, far sideline, will inbound the basketball. 6.44 left. Raised by four. And now we have a near steal by Pajud on the give and go. The floater is up and it's good by Dunning. Corey Dunning, the 6'9 senior from Lafayette, his first bucket. Two point game with six and a half left. Byron Joshua, fronted by Jones. They'll hold it. 15 to shoot. Joshua Paju bobbled it. Back door, Joshua lays it in. Joshua. 22 for Joshua. Four point game, 59-55. TJ Jones. Pass. Is it thrown or deflected? It's Braves basketball, ball thrown away. So the Braves will get it with six minutes left, a turnover. Oh, Xavier will keep it. I don't know if that ball was deflected or not. I think that should be looked at. 
That'll be Xavier's basketball. It looked to me like a Brave didn't touch that. I like to look at that. Lance Williams in front of the Brave bench. Lance Williams, pass across the top of the pressure to Dunning. Dunning back to Jones. Four point game, six to play, 59-55. Braves double. With it is Steele. TJ Jones on the attack. Jones drops it off and a foul called. He dropped it off to Dunning. And he's fouled. With three to shoot. Uh, a foul called on Thorne, his third. His third. 5.45 remaining. Free throws coming up for Corey Dunning. To make this a two-point game. First free throw is up, and this is no good. First trip to the line for Dunning. 5.45 remaining. As Gaines Wyatt will check out. 5.45 remaining. Corey Dunning, second free throw. He's got it. Three point lead, 59-56. 543 remaining. Byron Joshua. Jeremiah Gamble lobbed to Kendall. Kendall cut off on the baseline. Gamble for three. Nope. And with it for Xavier is Wells. Wells to Jones. 5-17 remaining. The lead is three. 59-56 all corn. Lance Williams. Williams gets it in the corner. Now there's a pull up way off by Jones. And with the Braves fired with it. Fired to Joshua walks it up. 4.55 remaining. Three point lead. 59-56. Joshua walks it to the left wing. Jeremiah Gamble, left side, Joshua. Kendall on the dump in. Kendall left block, two dribbles, double. Now top Joshua, Joshua on the attack, going right, pass deflected, Xavier with it. Loose ball, and Joshua gets it. Joshua in the corner, here's a three, Gamble. No, Kendall with it. Kendall, his floater's up, no. Rebound Dunning, there's contact there. Here's T.J. Jones. Jones knocked away by Kendall. Gets it to Hawkins. Hawkins inside, the layup is good by Bayard. Bayard puts the Braves up five. 61 to 56, four to play. Big possession defensively for all from here. Braves hustle, second and third. Defensive efforts. Now Williams, this floater out the window. No, follow is up. That's no good. And with it for the Braves is Bayard. 340 remaining is Joshua. In the corner, three ball. Hawkins, no. Bayard kept it alive, could not. And now going to the rack, scoop shot, short foul. And Steele was fouled. So we have a timeout on the floor with 328 remaining. Jeremy Lindsay was hacked. Joshua, his third. Good one here. Five point lead, 61 56. Free throws coming up on the other side of this timeout. This is great basketball. One down and two to go for Coach Mack and the ASU Braves. The Braves defeated the Jaguars this past Saturday to take hold of the number one spot in the West. It's now headed to the Lone Star State as the Braves take on the Tigers of Texas Southern in a Sunday matchup. You heard me right, a Sunday matchup. Pre-game 1.30, kickoff 2. Join Charles, the voice of the Braves, Edmonds, and D. Emmanuel Bonds for all the play-by-play. Cedric Tibbs, sideline reporter, and Jamari 
Carlos Chavez, which producer. It's ASU Football on WPRL 91.7 FM and WPRL.org. WPRL 91.7 FM is home of Braves football. Remember, it's a Sunday matchup. Don't you miss it, baby. The Braves and the Tigers. You could tell my heart, you could be bold. Oh, stand up if you love it, purple and gold. Purple and gold. You can't pray to who, and the I love it, so you can't get enough of that bold stuff. Welcome back to the Whitney Arena. Good ball game here. And Landon Bussey's gone on record as saying, you know, when we get these home games, he doesn't want anything easy. He doesn't want the cupcakes. He says, what can you learn from it? You don't get anything out of it. So he wants a test. Miles was a test. Xavier's been a test. The Braves will hit the road. This will be the final home game until SWAC. And even in SWAC, the Braves open up with three in a row on the road in the conference at Jackson, at Alabama State, and at Alabama A&M, the Braves won't return home until the second week of January. As the Braves are up by five. Free throws coming up here for Lindsey. First is up. Short. Maybe you see a little bit of fatigue from the Xavier goal rush. Second free throw coming up. And this one is good. Lindsey with 11. Three players in double figures for Xavier. Four-point lead, 61-57 with 3.20 remaining. Byron Joshua with Jalen Hawkins. Jeremiah Kendall will line up. Jeremiah Gambrell. Gambrell gets it into Kendall, and he had it stripped. Xavier with the basketball. He can't be careless. Now the dump inside, the up and under, floater, too strong, good defense by Kendall as he tried to get it in the ward. 250 remaining, four point game. Joshua, Kendall, Gamble the lineup. Bayard and Jalen Hawkins, the five, as the Braves take air out of it here with 15 to shoot. And a foul call is gonna be on Xavier's ward on the reach in for Kendall. Trying to knock the ball away. Chris Ward with his fourth. Ward with his fourth. So Jeremiah Kendall at the line with 17 points, 11 in the second half. Byron Joshua with 22, six in the second half. Kendall at the line to extend this lead, which is four at the moment. Masanat called back to the bench. Well, was he gonna be, was he gonna check in? And Landon Bussey had his arm like he's gonna send him back to the bench. Masanat will check in. The Braves have a lot of different pieces that they can mix and match fresh bodies. First free throw is good for Jeremiah Kendall, the senior from the Bronx, 18 for him. So Joshua with 22, Kendall with 18, and all corn up by five. 238 left in the second half. Second free throw coming up. And this one is good. 19 for Jeremiah Kendall. 63-57. Huge possession here with 238 remaining in the second half. 63-57, maybe the defensive possession of the game if the Braves can get a stop here. T.J. Jones fronted by Thorne. High screen by Wells. Jones left wing. Jones one-on-one. -on -one. Get it out of his hands and on the drive, Lindsey is floater, no. Ball comes out of bounds. It'll stay Xavier's ball with 11 to shoot. Up, they reset the clock, 20 to shoot. So they'll reset it. 219 remaining on the inbound pull up floater. No. And with it for the Braves is Bayard. 212 left. See if the Braves can get something out of this. The offensive possession of the game. 
63-57 with two minutes remaining. Byron Joshua off a screen. Thorne for three. Got it. Timeout all corn. And the Braves by nine. 66 to 57. I tell you what, this game came down to some 50-50 balls. And Landon Bussey talked about that in the Arkansas game, despite the big deficit. The 50-50 balls is something that you just got to continue to get regardless of the score. He felt like his team didn't get his share of those. But in critical moments in the second half, one possession game, four-point game, the Braves got their hands on some 50-50 balls in a critical moment. And they were able to get enough stops Hit enough free throws and execute as Thorne with his second triple. He's got six, and the Braves are up by nine with 153 remaining. Well, I'll tell you what, the Braves can pass a couple of tests. Landon Bussey got the test he wanted, number one. And, of course, you want to get the victory as well. So the Braves in pretty good shape here. And Landon Bussey wants to keep it under 60 if he can. So I think that's kind of what he's looking for here in the last two minutes. Oregon 43, UAPB 19 women's scores. Jackson State over Lamar and Owen, 113 to 39. Texas over Southern University, 80 to 35. Lady Braves won't play again until next Monday. They'll be at Nebraska. I'll be in Jonesboro, Arkansas next Tuesday as the men's next action next Tuesday at Arkansas State at 7 o'clock. T.J. Jones on a switch and working around. Ooh, and now got a foul called Masanat. Masanat fouled Wells. Masanat with his first. Masanat Scoreless. Jeremiah. Now Jeremiah Kendall set to check in. Lance Williams at the free throw line. Corey Dunning checking in. Pajud will check out. Masana will check out. 144 remaining. Nine point game. Lance Williams with 12 points. Seven in the second half. Free throw is up, good. 13 for Williams. So Ross with 15, Williams with 13, Lindsey with 11, Wells with 10. Second free throw, got it. 14 for Williams, it's a seven point game. The way this team can hit threes. Last, Landon Bussey wants to see some offensive sets here as they spread the floor. Joshua on the attack. Joshua floater, no. And the rebound, well, seven point game. And on the attack, floater up and it's good by Williams. He's got 16 and it's a five point game with 115 remaining, 66 to 61. Five point game and the Braves will take it out of it here. They don't foul, it's a two possession game. So if the Braves can execute. Joshua out top on a switch, fronted by Williams. 10 to shoot. Joshua, left wing. Joshua out top, Kendall and near steal. Jeremiah pull up on the free throw line. Good! 21 for Kendall. Seven point game with 47 seconds left. 68 to 61. Now here's a three. No good by Lindsey. And now with it is Bayard with 35 seconds left. And now we have a foul. And the foul is on Jeremiah Kendall. And he'll get two free throws here. Kendall with his third. With 33 seconds remaining. That is not what the Braves wanted. Kendall with the foul, with 33.9 remaining. 68 to 61, couple of free throws here for Lindsey. 
Want to finish it strong. Didn't need a foul there. Free throw is up, and it's good. Rattles home for Lindsey. He's got 12. 68 to 62 with 33 seconds left. Well, we've seen strange things happen. Caleb Huggins will check in for the first time. The 6'5", 205-pound sophomore from Zachary, Louisiana. Six-point game, two-possession game with 33 seconds left. Second free throw is up. That rattles out. Kendall with it. Xavier expect a foul here, Thorne. And now getting it out and the stump for Bayard. They handle the pressure. Eight-point lead, 70 to 62. And now we have a strip and out of bounds off of Xavier Lindsay. And the Braves will get the basketball with 21.4 remaining. Well, the Braves got the test that they wanted tonight. They'll get the win. Now they'll hit on the road. Joshua on the floor, Kendall. Now for the Braves, Jeremiah Gambrell and Thorne fouled with 13.8 remaining. 70 to 62. 13.8 remaining. Entertaining game. Landon Bussey got the test he wanted. And more importantly, got the win. The Braves won't see action on this floor again until the second week in January. A lot of games. A lot of games in non-conference. East Coast. A lot of East Coast flair on this schedule. Landon Bussey will head back to his home, Baltimore. The Braves will play Maryland. I'll be there to bring you that one. I've got to go to Maryland to see the Braves and Landon Bussey back home. The Braves' next action, Arkansas State at 7 o'clock next Tuesday, next Thursday at UAB. They'll play at Michigan State. Michigan State lost the other day. Free throw by Thorne. Too long. 10 seconds left. And for Xavier, on the drive is Lindsay. Shot no. Joshua with it. And that will do it as the Braves win 70 to 62. Entertaining game here tonight. Braves win 70 to 62. We'll take a two minute timeout. This is Braves basketball. One down and two to go for Coach Beck and the ASU Braves. The Braves defeated the Jaguars this past Saturday to take hold of the number one spot in the West. It's now headed to the Lone Star State as the Braves take on the Tigers.